Hairspray and 3D printing. Match made in heaven. Don't go away. So today on Grim 3D, we're going to talk about hairspray. Now, you know that I probably don't need a whole lot of hairspray. But I end up buying it all the time. I get the weirdest looks. Hairspray in my cart, two, three cans, and I don't have any hair. But this particular type of hairspray is magic for 3D printing. Absolute magic. Now, if you look at some of my old videos, I talk about bed adhesion with glue stick. Now I'll put that video up for everybody. You can check it out. Now here's the reason why I used the glue stick. Originally I used the glue stick because all I had in my printer stable here was the Maker Select Plus and it did not have a removable bed. So I'd heard about the hairspray, okay, and but I hadn't decided to use it yet because I was very concerned about the overspray. So maybe if you're concerned about the overspray and you can't, you don't have a removable bed that you can get away from your machine to spray, then maybe this isn't for you. But I gotta tell you, not only does the hairspray work to help with bed adhesion, when I print PETG on my PEI smooth plate from Prusa, a lot of times that PETG will stick well enough on super clean PEI that it will absolutely damage your PEI. And that's what convinced me to go ahead and start using the hairspray. For instance, here's my original smooth PEI sheet. This came with the printer. And right here on the back, you can see, maybe you can see that in the camera right there. That's where some PETG totally pulled up my PEI. I couldn't get it off of there. I worked at it a little bit harder, a little bit harder, and boom, it brought it up and ripped it all in one fell swoop. I couldn't do anything about it. It was just basically ruined. I mean, it's smooth enough that you can get away with printing on there still, but if you have any serious adhesion right there, it's gonna lift it up again too, especially when it's hot. So not only does this work for bed adhesion when it's warm, when you've got a heated bed, but it also works really well as a release agent when it cools back down. Now, I do not print on glass, but people tell me that if you print on glass, you use hairspray, you spray this down on your glass, you print on it, it makes the adhesion beautiful, beautiful first layers. And then when, you, if, when you're done printing, if you let it completely cool, you will come back and your piece will actually have popped off of the bed entirely because of the shrink rate of the glass when it cools. With some release agent on there and the shrink rate, it just pops right off. So question for everybody, and you can put this down in the comments, whatever you want, because I've had quite a few people tell me, I tried freaking hairspray, it didn't work at all. Well, did you try this one? Okay, I've never had this particular hairspray not work beautifully for me. So now if you're, you know, just grab some hairspray from the bathroom that your, your daughter, your sister, your wife's been using, and you just spray that on the bed, I don't know if that's gonna work. This is all I've ever used. So down in the comments below, if you've found other ones that work beautifully, let everybody know. See, we'd all like to know. If you found ones that don't work worth a the crap, they're just terrible. Let us know. Okay, the hairspray is the bomb diggity. I'm loving it. It works great. It's always been consistent for me. And no, I don't even clean my bed every time, which I'll show you in a minute. I actually, once I've pulled a piece off of the bed, off of my build plate, I just spritz some hairspray down on the build plate right where the piece came off. I'll do that 20, 30 times by the before I have to clean this. So let me show you how that works. Let's head into a sink with some IPA and I'll show you how I clean it first. And then how I lay down my initial hairspray coverage, which I cover the whole thing initially before I print anything on it. And then once I've got something printed, I'll show you how I just spritz it in the right spots and keep printing. And the only time you really have to stop and clean it is when you notice that your first layer is becoming thin, like really thin. 
like the printers not be able to lay down the plastic because it does build up it does get in there but anyways let's go look at how to clean this off and then how to re coat it and then how to do the intermittent coats between there and then you'll know everything you need to know about hairspray all right let's get to it so this is what i do this is exactly what i do here so i take this see i've got this is all kinds of messed up all kinds of dirty all kinds of I mean, it's gritty it's got i mean i've been printing on this i think that sweater pattern i printed 45 times like literally it was cookie cutters for a for a church group anyways i this is all gummed up it's got it's been well used with with hairspray but remember the hairspray is protecting my surface uh, quite a bit this is pei underneath here which works fantastically so what i do with this is i will take this and i'm in a sink here obviously hopefully the echo in this room is not too bad but i'll take my ipa right out of the right out of the container and i just want to put ipa on there i want to create a little bit of surface tension with it um, and get it on there what i really kind of want it to do is soak a little bit because the IPA will, will kind of eat that hairspray. So I'm rolling it around so it gets to all the edges, all the corners. Make sure every single part of it has got some IPA on it and just let it go for a minute. And then when I've got the whole thing is nice and got a nice sheen on there, maybe a little bit more IPA on there, a nice sheen on there, I'll just take my fingers and I'll rub it. And you can actually feel the hairspray start to kind of turn back into a gel. All right, so I just do that all the way around. I'm just trying to make sure that all of the hairspray in there is nice and absorbed with IPA, especially around the edges where it takes a lot of overspray from the hairspray, but it doesn't really actually do a whole lot of printing. And yes, usually I do this with the bathroom fan on. I can smell this pretty good right here, but... Um, I'm trying to not get the extra noise in the background, so I'll turn the fan on when I'm done. A little more IPA. Now, another way I've actually done this, which I uh, make sure you're ventilated, but another way I've actually done this is with a little spray bottle, and I've just done it right there at my desk on my silicone pad. So that doesn't work as well, and it's not as clean as doing it just down in a sink somewhere. So I got the sink idea, and I just got a bathroom right near my, my maker space. So I'm still feeling a little bit of hairspray up here in this corner that's not quite reconstituted yet. Basically, you're turning the hairspray back into a gel or a liquid with this IPA. It works really great. It actually works fairly fast. It's about the fastest way I've seen to get this off here. And I just rub it around with my fingers. So then, and I don't know if this uh, water noise is going to interfere with my mic. I've got a lapel mic on, but um, I'm going to actually just turn on some water now and just let that rinse off. And I have a washcloth right here, just a little washcloth that uh, I have like a group of these. I just buy these like at Walmart for, you know, in a pack. Um, I don't really like to use paper towels too much. They're a little bit wasteful for me, and I don't like the way that they shred. So I and these can be totally rewashed. I mean, it's not a big deal. Just go get some um, washcloths from Walmart or wherever you can get them cheap. The ones that they sell at a place like Costco or Sam's Club are actually pretty nice. The food service ones. So, anyways, as soon as I can feel that that whole surface area is nice and smooth and there's no like little little specks on it or spots on it or that kind of thing keep going until it's super nice and clean i'm not feeling any there's a little pock mark right there a little little bump i can feel there's one right there they might not all come out, but that's all right. What you're looking for is you're looking for that to be completely, and you'll feel it too. The hairspray on there is pretty uh, slippery. 
Uh, it doesn't feel the same as the regular PEI. So anyways, that's how I that's how I clean it pretty quick and easy. It's a little bit faster when you're not trying to explain it and show it on a camera at your sink. So anyways, that's pretty much ready to go. If I hit that with a, a hand towel really quick just to dry it off, just to touch. Anyways, I hit that with a towel, give it some dry time, back to the nice, smooth, brand new looking PEI sheet. And this is a second build plate, but you remember when we saw the other one, the PEI on that looked pretty new as well. Uh, it stays really clean. That, that hairspray really protects it. So it works to help with adhesion. It works to help with uh, as a release agent, and it also works as a protectant of your bed surface. Now, it's not going to protect if you don't run your, uh, run your nozzle down into the bed or anything like that. That's still going to damage your PEI surface. But... As far as using it over and over and over time and time and time again, it just comes out smelling like roses every single time. Look how clean that is and how smooth that is and how well that worked. Now to recoat this again, something that I like to focus on right here is I focus on for the very first coat, this is only for the first coat, I focus on a really nice even coat, maybe go two directions to get it even, but I also put some extra focus right there where the prime line goes because that prime line can dig in over time. So I put a little extra right there to protect the PEI a little bit from that prime line. Now, like this plate, I've had this plate for a while. I mean, it's looking pretty much brand new both sides. So I've used it quite a bit. This hairspray really helps protect it. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to take my hairspray little extra on the prime line spot and then I'm going to turn it the other direction now notice I'm not near my printer I'm not where any overspray can get on anything but maybe the carpet like it might go down to the carpet and then I'm going to hit it the other direction really fast boom and that's kind of the I don't know if you can see that that's kind of the surface I'm looking for. It's nice and even. It's not totally gummed up. It's not gonna run. It's not gonna do anything. I, don't, I wanna make sure I don't get any on the back here because I don't really want it left on the printer. Uh, I don't want this to actually to stick to the printer. So there you go. It's nice and even and that'll dry just fine, especially if you've already got some heat going on your build plate over there. You can put it down on there and it will dry super quick now between prints you'll notice this one right here i've got a couple of a couple little shapes on there look like little keys that i've printed in the past and so that's lifted up some of my some of my hairspray right there i don't know if you can see that very well there it is just the little footprint of whatever i've printed in the past so what i do with these is i don't need to coat the whole thing with hairspray and I do this between every print like every single time I hit this little extra hairspray especially if I'm printing with PETG if you get that PETG clear down on the PEI it has the capability to lift it right off of there and ruin your build surface so on this one I'm literally I've got see if I can get those keys to where you can see them okay with my light all right I'm just gonna take and I'm just gonna hit those like that, and then I'm gonna make sure that I hit that prime line up there in the corner, just like that. So you'll notice that I quite literally only have, this is not as easy to see as on the dark one, but I literally only have a hairspray exactly where I need it. And I go ahead and print on that again. It works great. Well, that's about it for this episode of Grim 3D and hairspray, 3D printing, I'm telling you, it's the best thing I've used to get the stuff to stick and actually to get it released and to protect your build plate. It works great. However, I don't know about any other type or brand or model of hairspray than this. So if you know of any other formulations that work or any formulations that really don't work, please put that down in the comment. I'm sure we'd all like to know. That would be great. Uh, this one I know, you get this anywhere pretty cheap. You get it at the dollar store, I think. You get it at Walmart. You get it pretty much anywhere hairspray is sold. And as long as people are buying it, I'm pretty sure they're going to keep making it. Aquanet, 
purple can. Hopefully you're leaving me a comment on this one. Remember to keep it civil, smash that like button, ring the bell, and let's get the hairspray knowledge to all of those new kids out there 3D printing so we can help them with adhesion and release and protection. We'll see you out there.